base with the Marsies. Marsies, 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 Marsies. All right, you are now tuned in to 1 a.m. radio. It's your boy, Mars Three Times. This is the Mars Files. I'm here with a couple special guests. I got Assad Ill and Bernie Giraffe. How you guys doing? What's the deal? Yo, yo. Fucking chilling, hanging out, living life. Um, So uh, before we get into the interview, the the Little Wayne album came out today, and uh, I just want to talk about that for a second because Assad had a hot take, and um, I kind of just want you to re and, like re-say what you said earlier about Little Wayne's album. I want to have like a quick little debate about it. I, I, there's a couple songs on there that I Talk, like. Talking to the mic? There's a couple songs on there that I do like. But okay. overall, I just feel like he was still, you know, trying to prove that he could rap. And I just wanted to hear, you know, simple Lil Wayne. I wasn't trying to hear, you know, Monster Wayne on every fucking track. It, See, said, it felt over rapish. Like he over rapped. He like, over rapped? Yeah, which is a thing. Like you can over rap. <laughs> That's okay. So, so first, I want to say that's an interesting perspective from someone who I consider like a. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say conscious rapper, but I say a lyrical rapper. You yeah, know, to definitely. say to say that he's he's over like over rapping. Well, even like, but I, but I also I also will say that. Um, I mean, I feel like this is this to me this to me it feels like vintage Little Wayne. Like it feels like it feels like what little wayne's always done i mean i think i think on the carter three i know what you mean he he was it was like a little bit slower the beats the beat selection was different but i also feel like he was doing what's relevant right now but like still staying true to himself and i also i also feel like maybe he picked up the pace this is this is a hot take maybe he picked up the pace because um, I think I think for example, like somebody like Ski Master Slump God kind of brought back what Lil Wayne was doing back when he was doing it, as far as like the punchlines and the metaphors. Yeah. So I feel like maybe he picked up the pace listening to Ski Mask. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can like I said, that. it's a I hot could, take. But it's like still, I said, it's a hot take. I could feel that, and that makes even more sense. Like, but it just sounds like an under like every except for the songs that I do like, the styles that he rapped in where I don't like. It just sounds like. Man, He's that was so too much. Un- undeveloped. Like, that shit could be so much better if, one, he actually decided not to mumble. Like, you feel me? And enunciate, bro. And I don't want to hear lying and lying like that. Like, you feel me? Like, the... I mean, that's like what he Lil got Wayne, metaphors. Little Wayne's always done that. Nah, he's never. Little Wayne's always done. Not always. in every fucking song. He switched it up, bro. He switches metaphors up and he switches patterns up, bro. That shit just got. It was just like over the head. Like, like man, come on. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. All right, anyways, I'm a big Wayne fan, you know. Disclaimer: and, It doesn't you know, doesn't sound like it, it doesn't it, sound like you're a Wayne fan right now. I'll be I'm honest a big with Wayne you. fan. I fuck like doesn't sound I like you're right now. Most of everything he like Carter Four was even fight more better than this. I one. see. I like this one more I than Carter Four. A, you sleep then. What was on Carter Four? Like blunt blowing nigga. <laughs> that shit was <laughs> that was like try hard. Mega Man, like oh, that shit was shit on there, bro. Uh, it was yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I like this one more. Anyways, um, so yeah, like I said, I'm here with uh, Bernie Giraffe and Asad Il. Um Asad Il is a rapper. You're from you're from L.A., right? Yeah, I'm from L.A., Lamert Park area. And then Bernie Giraffe is a producer, um, DJ. Um, funny story, I actually met Giraffe through uh, my homies from Florida, uh, Stevie. Well, I, I didn't know Carson until I came out here, so my homie Word. from Florida, Stevie. Um, and at that time, you were like on, you were like, you were, you were on tour with, with Alex or you were about to be on tour with Alex? I think when I met you, I was coming off the first tour. Of tour with Alex, okay. Yeah. And then um, and then we met, we hang out, we, we kind of like hit it off, and um, and then you introduced me to Assad. And we originally, um, before I got the job at Dash, um, we tried to do a fucking podcast in my homie Zach's room. <laughs> yep. And then it just, it just sucks because like that same day, um, they were like fixing some pipes under his house, and like apparently the pipes were like right under his room. Because like we were talking and like all you could hear is ring, ring, ring. <laughs> That's great. So um so yeah so I'm glad I'm glad we're here I'm glad we're doing this and yeah. um kind of let's just start let's just start at the beginning um even though we already said where you guys are from but like where are you guys from and what was it like growing up there? Oh well, shit, Lamert Park. Well, I should be clarifying. I'm from you know Los Angeles. I grew up in you know Baldwin Village, which is like adjacent to Lamert Park. But when I started picking up, you know, the rap thing, I was mostly rapping in Lamert Park. So as a rapper, what what is Lamert Park? Because I've heard I've heard Lamert Park talk is about just it. you know the most cultural, 
place for African Americans in Los Angeles, I would say. Like if you if you want to go find your culture and your people as an African American, as art, you know, that's it. go to Lemert Park, you'll find all of that. Black businesses, you know, it's a good little hub of positivity and whatnot. Okay. And you know, that's you know, I met basically everybody that I basically rap with now I met I met over there. Okay. And you know that that was the start of everything. But growing up in LA, you know, it's the same story every LA rapper gonna tell you. What is it? What is the story? Gangs. You feel me? Homies dying. You know, homies going to jail. The same old, same old. And then Giraffe, you're you're from New York, right? Yeah, um, I'm from West Point. It's a military base out there. Um, were, were your parents in the military? Yeah, my dad was, but it was like he was in the bands, so it wasn't like soldier That's shit. That's super. <laughs> your dad was playing in the military band. The the tuba. That's, That's gnarly. Yeah. That's gnarly. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I lived out there, and uh, they the military groups you with who you work with. So they, like, it was just neighborhoods of musicians. So you oh, wake up crazy. every morning, and there'd be, like, people practicing clarinets and trombone, all this shit, man. That's crazy. So you've basically been around music your entire life. Yeah, my first load in on stage was, I think it was four. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's that's insane. What, what brought you out to L.A.? Uh, man, my, he had retired and they moved to California and then I got into Berkeley school of music out in Boston and didn't go cause fuck 40 a grand, 40 grand a year. Like, man, yeah. that's not cool. And then I'm like 18. So I got kicked out of my apartment, came out here, Dope. you know, just wasn't paying my rent, spending all weed money and good food. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Um, so like, how, how, I mean, obviously you got into music because you're around it your whole life. Asad, how'd yeah. you get into music? Shit, same thing. Uh, my dad, growing up, he had a, a studio. He made beats, and you know, I, I grew up on tape decks and eight tracks, like way back. Like, I've, um, I've never seen an eight track, man, in yeah. real life. I'm 27, but I've never <laughs> seen. Shit, I got a reel to reel at home. Like, that's what I, you know, I recorded my first songs, you know, at my dad's studio. And he, you know, encouraged the writing and whatnot. And then I, honestly, I quit at like 14 because as a rapper, if you ain't got shit to rap about, what you gonna rap about? You know, as a young kid, I wasn't really going out, go doing shit. I had nothing to rap about. So I just quit and I thought like maybe I become president or some shit. The first black president, I wanted to be the first black president, but we all know how that panned out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so your boy, you feel me? Thought I'd be a, you know, ball player. I was training and shit, but a nigga never grew. So I was like, fuck, it kind of came uh, full circle. When I was in high school, a teacher needed volunteer musicians and rappers for this project. I was high one day in class, like, I'll do it. And I was joking, though. I didn't think she like caught me out on it or anything. But she forced me to record a song, do this whole little photo shoot and all this shit. And it like, I forgot how much I loved this shit until that happened. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is what we doing. Like, this is it. Word, word. And then how did you guys end up meeting? He hit me up on Twitter. I stand him pretty hard on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, he was like, this nigga sucks, so, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, who is this guy? Like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, bro, up. let me send you beats. And they were like, semi-trash. I was like, right at that point before I was like, satisfied with what I was making. Word. I mean, how long have you been making beats for? 12 years. I okay. think I met him like, Two years ago. So you've been making beats for 10 years before you can actually say like you liked one of your beats? Yeah. I mean, I, I it was on, he had posted a track that he made at the beach or whatever, some shit like that, because he's weird. And uh, <laughs> motherfucking, he posted it. And I was like, damn, this shit kind of hard. And you know, to this day, I've never rapped to it. I wrote songs to it. I never recorded to it and shit. I don't know why. Don't ask me. But, you know, I'm like, damn, this shit hard. I should get with this nigga and like, we should actually you know, start trying to do shit. And I came to his house and whatnot, and I don't forget the name of the EP, but there's three tracks on there that I thought. Blue Dreams. In my mind, like, I was like, oh shit, this is like, like next level trap shit. Like, because I'm trying to always elevate what's hot and shit. And I thought I, it was there. His development now is even crazier. Like, that nigga's cold. <laughs> word, word. Um, Let's uh, talk about some of your influences. Like, cause I'm sure you guys are different. Like, Maybe your influences kind of come from like opposite sides of the world. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I kind of want to talk about that and see like the ju the juxtaposition between you two. Word. Uh, shit, man. Before I was producing, I was playing like death metal. So I got a lot of metal influence, which I think 
influences my low end, like just the heaviness of kicks and how I mix in them in my shit. Um, but I also love like really trippy stuff, like Flying Lotus. Like, dude, that guy's mixes that shit's nuts. Um, and then, man, who else? I don't know. I, it's it's kind of all over the spectrum. A lot of classic rock, Pink Floyd, shit like that. But like, also like jazz, you know, like you know Thelonious Monk, some shit like that. Fucking, it's everywhere. Producer wise, though, man, I'm so bad with who's producing because I'm busy listening to everything else. Word. So I'm I'm more listen to, I'm more just listen to sounds. What sounds cool, you know. It's, um, I don't know. Obviously, like Metro Boomin's crazy. Southside's fucking crazy. Shit like that. Uh, Real quick, how do you feel about what Russ said? And b- before we get on a Russ tangent, actually, let's let's finish. Let's finish. Yeah, let, this. Me my, <laughs> let me get my influences out first before we go. We switch to Russ. I got some Hold shit to on. say. <laughs> But shit, I mean, influences. I'm, I grew up in a hip hop studio. Uh, my my influence is more on a conscious side. So like, you know, he grew up on death metal, and I grew up on like, you know, Bob Marley. Uh, oh, I grew up old, on that too. Don't the you? old the old Kanye. You feel me? The most deaths, the Nas. You know, the Tupac and shit. But you know, as I started, you know, I say like middle school. You just, I I think I discovered shit like Nirvana. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And start going into like alternative rock and shit, and like. Hearing like how like voices stress and shit. To this day, like I think in the last year, I just got an appreciation for R and B. Like so, right now, R and B is probably the most influential shit on my like music right now. Like word, that's that's interesting because I fucking don't really like R and B at all. Man, once you once you start, you know, once you fall in love, G, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> them songs start making sense. Like oh shit, like. That's what that means. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Um, so yeah, I mean, r- real quick, actually, let's play a song and then we'll come back and and talk about the rest shit. Um, what song you guys want to play? I got I got like your SoundCloud pulled up and I got a couple videos pulled up. What, what should I play? Shit, play this time from uh, Giraffes featuring Vinny Virgo. Yeah, the, we got the, some shit to announce. End of the world EP. Year and we're back. Mm-hmm. Alright, um, what did you guys, you, so you guys said you had an announcement, what's the announcement? Let's talk about it real quick before we get into this fucking Russ thing. Which, by the way, I'm a fan of Russ. I know it's like uh, sacrilegious on my end because oh, of the- today's gonna be fine. Because of the people, yeah, no, it, it definitely will be. Um, so, um, so yeah, what do you, what's the announcement? What's the announcement? We next up. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> shit, we just started a, a whole ass collective and shit. You feel me? LMP, Love Money Power Music Group. Yeah, it's like six of us started it so far. Okay. Yeah, it's no more members though. Names? Uh, the people Vinny Virgo. Uh, he's a Florida native. I know I know Vinny. Uh, Waju. Uh, myself. I'm in it. And then uh, Strange Figures, uh, another producer in it. Dope. And, Dope. Yeah. What's the plan with it? Music coming real soon. But in a real way, don't want to disclose too much, but LMP, Music Group, Love Money Power, get familiar. Word, word. Super cool. All right, so earlier you were saying that you fuck with, like, Metro Boomin and Southside. What? How do you feel about what, uh, what like, Russ, the, the comments that Russ said? I can't, I can't quote them directly because I don't remember, but it was, it was something along the lines of um, their... Oh, do you remember what he said? Because now I can't even think of what he said. Bro, that guy's so far off my radar. He says a lot of fuck shit, though. Yeah. How do you guys feel about Russ? Be careful, because he might show up. <laughs> <laughs> Jump, you guys. Okay. <laughs> He's not going to actually show up. You feel me? He's going to send guys, and then one guy with a long ponytail who looks like him, he's going to be like, see, that's me. <laughs> I mean, Sinatra did it, too, though. Man. Sinatra did that? Fuck Russ. No, I'm playing. Sinatra, Sinatra was helping, like, Kennedy get in power, and he's doing his whole music rap pack shit, but he was paying people underneath to go do his dirty work. But, come, but that was for Kennedy, though. I mean, it's still, that was for Sinatra, bro. I mean, it's still. But I'm saying, it, so that's so Frank you, Sinatra. You I, calling I'm, Russ Frank Sinatra right now? I'm, my nigga. I'm <laughs> saying that. Uh, no, no, no. Musically, nah, nah, nah. But the move, yeah, that's some that's some bullshit. No, no, that's not. that's my opinion. Nah, though. some real boss shit is like, hey, bro, I caught you outside and I put, I threw that punch by myself. That's nigga. not boss shit though, nigga. That's some that's some that's peon shit. That's real nigga. No, it's not. That's, <laughs> that's real some peon shit. shit, 
Bro, that's not no peon shit, nigga. I'm I don't give a fuck who you are, or where you from, bro. I'm gonna tell you this you right now. You sending niggas, you sending niggas on me to settle a beef, nigga. That a real that each nigga that you sent to go settle your beef would have gave you a fair one. Use a bitch, bro. To send a message, nigga, when you could throw hands, nigga, use a bitch, I mean, bro. Bro's bro, bro, bro is worth fifteen million. It don't matter. That's I mean, yeah. smoke perp is worth money too. It's not fifteen million. It don't matter nah. how much he is. smoke perp is. Right. He's worth money, my nigga. And you, do, he sent him. Yo, he sent. Put him. Put the mic. Put the mic like to your. It's like yeah. All I'm saying is, <laughs> if niggas want to do all the fight shit, nigga, fight your own battles. I ain't gonna ever. I don't care how rich I get. On me, you say some shit about A side ill, you might see A side ill personally. On me, military does the same thing, man. They don't send their generals in there, they're I sitting mean, up and in yeah. the tower with little cars around and, and they're shit. They're bitches, nigga, and they're bitches. And the people who send them out and do all that fuck shit be bitches. And on me, we got a whole fucking I mean, hoo ha about it on know. TV right I'm, now, my I'm, nigga. I'm gonna be honest with you, if I got the money to do it, I'm gonna send my hitters. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't. What do you got? What do you if you if you got hitters, why not send them? I got plenty of hitters. Aside set of his own beefs, I don't need no nigga. Mm 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 mm. I don't know, man. Mm mm. I don't need no help with this, my nigga. Like, what is like? I don't know. You think you my boss? Oh, I'm gonna send these niggas. I mean, go, I mean, it's had that nigga killed. I mean, that's a boss shit, nigga. Having niggas beat up is some pussy playground shit, nigga. A boss move. Get that nigga killed and had that nigga stop talking about my name for real. On me, if you want to talk about, uh, what, uh, I mean, that's like uh, too much. Uh, oh, now it's too much, nigga. No, because that's what that shit gonna escalate to. Because smoke pump, if smoke perp get money, what you think he gonna be doing if niggas try to send niggas to fight? And what shit gonna escalate to? Because you want to send somebody. some fucking fights, nigga. No, fuck a fight, bro. If you're not gonna throw these hands, bro, one on one, bro. Then on me, you want to send niggas? You want to send them? We could send niggas, bro. Just <laughs> my niggas gonna be totally different though. On me, I can guarantee it. So you just said you would then? No, I said I'm, personally. Uh, but if you want to send niggas and want to play the game, because I'm not going to have to, I'm not going to fight 15 niggas at once, niggas. So obviously, if you send niggas, I got to get my niggas. But we just not going to be moving the same. So you don't like Russ? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, like, I don't like Russ just because of his attitude. Like, he tried to claim this, like, positive shit. And like, oh, I'm positive this, I'm positive that. But what he says in his actions don't reflect that. Because, on me, let's take that yeah. whole situation into account. Or, oh, positive vibes, nigga, on me. That shit's for peons. I don't care what a nigga's saying about me. Nigga, I'm selling out rural tours. I'm rich as fuck, nigga. Why I do think, I care um, what these peons are saying about me? I think the, the, the thing was... Because I'm short as fuck and I have a short man complex. I think the thing was... I think the thing was that... Um, Smoke Perp um, took a picture of Russ's sister and used it as his like, uh, used it as his profile picture. Hey Amen. I mean, and yeah, that's it, even more kind of reason weird. to show up yourself and beat that man's ass. But like, I mean, Russ has too much money to just be fighting people. Okay, yeah. but then I mean, it, shit just, come with that. Shit come with that. I mean, Eminem let some shit. I mean, happen for six years, nigga, with his daughter, nigga, and rapped about it. And rapped about it, nigga, because that's the culture he in, my nigga. All this other shit, oh, because you want to prove yourself to niggas and for what? Because you want to be a gangster? You want to be a gangster? Or what, what, like, nigga, that shit, uh, on me, where I'm from, niggas is dying trying to be gangsters, bro. Like, that shit not funny. That shit not fun. That shit's not to be endorsed. That shit not to be glorified, period. Damn. That's, uh, that's heavy, man. I guess you're not a Russ fan. <laughs> <laughs> We, that, we could, just uh, it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, I get the, I get the picture. Um, so where were we? We were how how how'd you guys get into music? Obviously, boom, it's been around your whole life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how'd you guys meet? We got that. Yeah. Um, what's uh what's what's coming? What do we got? What do we got on the way? I'm about to uh, release a mixtape. Okay. Various producers and shit. You know, you know. Um, actually, now that I think about it, you know what I wanted to ask you guys about? What happened? Cause last time we were talked, you were you were with like a label. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> and now Some more I, rem juicy shit. I remember last time. Uh, last time I talked to Giraffe, um, something ended up happening, and you guys aren't with the label anymore. Uh, what was the label? Why? Uh, and then what happened? Or you don't even have to say the label if you don't want to give them clout. But now, it's not even about no clout shit because not everybody at the label and the label itself is they're okay. Like you know, I still got love for Daddy Kev, DJ Nobody. Uh, yeah. So who the was, folks what was in the what office? Was, what was the label? Alpha Pup. Alpha the order Pup. label. Not even Alpha Pup, the order the label. label. Yeah. Okay. You know, who was, you know, spearheaded. But I'm not going <laughs> to. I might as well say his name. 
But this nigga named Jupiter or whatever. Uh huh. This thing is supposed to be the president or whatever. Okay. Um, how this, did you end up in the deal? Let's kind of start it at the beginning. So you're rapping, you're making noise in LA, and what this label reaches out. Yeah, and the first time I said no, okay. let's just put that out there because nobody really knows that, and they just think that you know I'm owed some shit. They called twice, and the second time I'm like, all right, fuck it, I ain't got no distribution. It'd be nice to be on iTunes for once. Niggas lied and said I have a whole bunch of features that I never had and a whole bunch of producers that I didn't never get on me. Like, if we want to talk about shit, but fuck that. These niggas start talking about, oh, you not selling, you not doing numbers. It's hard. Like, you can't be asking for a repost on SoundCloud. But nigga, you're the label. You should be reposting my shit on SoundCloud regardless. Right? Oh, we don't, we don't, then Alpha Pub, like, it's just, it's just too much confusion. And everybody, I don't know who's the leader in the bitch. Everybody's going to tell me, go talk to this nigga. I'm talking to yeah. the nigga who I think is running this shit. And he's telling me, go talk to this nigga. And it's like my, one, I didn't got time for this. Two, you want to start talking about numbers and shit. When y'all not doing this shit to make your artists go to that next level. I mean, I was on that. But you don't think- I was on the Wave app, you feel me? Before Wave got all popular and cloudy with, you know, Doja Cat, Kanye West and all that shit. Like, you feel me? I was on that shit, nigga. Reality show. I was a finalist. I mean, the label didn't do shit to pr- promote it, to get the niggas to vote for me, to okay, win and on, all this shit. Hold on, hold uh, on. The, the, the reality show come out? Yeah, it came out. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, what was the reality show? It was called Versus. Where, where can people find it? I have no idea now. I think Wave deleted it. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I yeah think they for took real. it off, man. And they, they did like this relaunch and shit. I still got a channel on the uh, Wave app and all that. To prove that, you know, I was associated, but fuck all that. Like, they deleted it, and for whatever reason that, I don't know. So wait, like, you were on the reality show? Who else was on the reality show? I was on there with Satire, Noah James, Waju, B.B. O'Hare. And then these are, like, people who, like, nobody like me, really, right? It was more about the judges and, like, the, and shit. So, like, it was judges like Currency, Casey Veggies, Kenny Burns was the host. Uh, Trinidad James was a judge. Murs was a judge. Dumbfounded. Dumbfounded was a judge. Uh, Ghostface Killer, cool kid. What was All the these... What was the premise of the reality show? The rap, rap. Who's the best rapper? So it's these rap competitions that they had us all do, and you know, a nigga made it to the second. Like I mean, as a finalist. Yeah. And I was telling them like, hey, like the label, like help me win, nigga. This could be a big move, you know, just to be associated with Wave because I knew what Wave would become. It was. It was. Being in the building, I could see how they move. Like, yeah, this shit finna be big. Attach yourself to this shit. Nobody wanna listen to me. I mean, I lose. I'm so not. You, were, you got second place. Yeah, yeah I got second place. I'm Who not. Won? Hunt BB O'Hare, the what? only girl on the show. Okay. Which you feel me? That was like, I mean, we would have lost regardless. She, not to discredit her, because she's hard as fuck, and she would have won against a lot of people. But you know, it is what it is. Them niggas didn't help me reach my fan base that is behind. You know, it's. Yeah, it was all vote based. So you, you had to okay, like tune but in. Okay, but here's my question: You don't think as an artist you're supposed to get? Because I mean, would you sign a deal with them for distribution? Nah, I signed the distribution and the marketing deal. I was taking budgets out and all that. It was a real, <laughs> like, it was a deal. Yeah, it wasn't just a distribution deal. It was a marketing deal too. At least I was under the impression it was yeah, based, and based off what I had signed. So, and it was just like, and it was non exclusive and all this other shit. So it's like. So, 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 so you take out budgets for marketing and then where'd you, where'd you put the money? No, I don't think they supposed to do that. Cause I don't, as an artist, nigga, who, who, who do I know to market my shit? Y'all, the label signing me to do the shit, nigga. What the fuck am I, like, this is the whole shit I'm in the meeting telling you, hey, we need to do this. We need to do this. You go out and. Do that. Y'all have the resources. Y'all not writing these checks to me directly. Y'all want to write a check for a video that on me that want me to pay for a video. You gave the check to the director. The director paid nobody who shot the video, nigga. And then I'm paying a thousand dollar budget for a video that nobody shot. But it like what the fuck is like? What kind of business practice is this? Like nah, fuck that. So then what ended up happening? How'd you how'd you end up leaving? I, because oh, I was asking for too much. Asking for a repost and like, you know, heads up, like ha- promoting my events was asking for too much. Was it so was the label actually Alpha Pup or was it a sub label? It was the order label yeah, under Alpha Pup. Yeah. It's not Alpha Pup, it's the order label. So it was, but it was for sure connected with Alpha Pup. <laughs> yes, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, so you end up leaving the label and, and we're here now. Yeah, and we're here now. Independent as fuck. You feel me with big shit popping <laughs> that I can't even. <laughs> 
at this point because when you find out when you start fucking with real people you realize that you not even supposed to be able to talk about what kind of deal you was in yeah so that we're here now i can't talk about everything that's coming up you feel me but, but big shit popping you're you're planning on <laughs> dropping a, a mixtape yeah mixtape is coming you know? and that's like probably be like my last solo project of the year and i'm doing a, a couple of joint eps the lmp ep and uh you feel me? I'll be doing features for him. Yeah, I got, I got a project coming out probably this winter before the end of the year. Okay, okay. Yeah. You guys uh, you guys want to get into another song real quick? Shit, yeah. I'm down. Uh, let's do No Luck off of the... You gotta, can you go through Spotify on here? Yeah. Yeah, No Luck here off my last EP that I just dropped. And we're back. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can scream about. Scream is, about? Scream about. I don't know shit, if y'all like man. politics at all. Oh, I don't want to get into no. that because that's that's a fucking battle. That's going to be an uphill battle with me for sure. I just want to say Kavanaugh. Um, <laughs> um, oh, uh, Emphasis on the no. <laughs> what's uh, what's something that um, that um, people don't know about you that's like an interesting thing that they should know? Shit, I'm, I'm, I'm Muslim. You're Muslim? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yes way. Damn. I was to say, how'd you become Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> I was born Muslim, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. Dad, my dad was Muslim and shit. But. What's, um, what's something that people don't know about Muslims? Because I don't know a lot. So We're not terrorists. Well, obviously, but... I, I mean, mean, people, it seems like people don't know that. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, some people, yeah, but... Gotta, gotta say that first. Uh, shit, I don't know. We rap and shit, and we regular people, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, but like, like what's something like, like what's something in the religion that like people don't know? I mean, I don't know anything about. Like, tell me a little right. bit about this being is, Muslim. This is, this is interesting. Like, so, like in the Middle East and stuff, you know, the burqa and all that stuff. Like, nine times out of ten, the women you see wearing that wants to wear it. Secondly, they're not hot. It actually makes them way much cooler in the climate like having under bigger armor? clothes. It's like Under Armour. Hunt. Kind of, whatever, I don't know. But it's just like the way the clothes are uh, that way, it allows air to circulate. And so they're not hot. It's, you know, I don't, you know, there's not, there's, I don't know what y'all, like, you would have to ask, like, what about that? Like, like I don't know. Well, what about that b big building, Mecca? Have you ever been there? Oh, the, uh, the Kaaba? The Kaaba? Mm, the Kaaba. I, not yet. I want to go and I have a dream to go with my dad and or just fly him out there. Right? And he can do it. How often do you guys go to church? It's supposed to go every Friday, and it's not called church. It's called the mosque. My bad. I'm it's not, good. I'm no, not no, religious no, 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 at all. No, no. I don't I'm, want to offend you. I'm not offended. <laughs> I'm not. A, you're asking questions. How can I be offended? <laughs> um, so you're supposed to go every Friday? Yeah. I mean, and I'm not a, a observant as I should be. Yeah. You know? Don't you guys have to, like, pray all the time? Pray five times a day as well. Like, I should be praying right now if we, you know. Don't you, isn't it, like, on a point system, too? A point system. Yeah, isn't there like, isn't there like, um, it's not on the point system. I just, <laughs> I wanted to see what, how you would explain it because maybe there is, and we just I don't mean, call it a point. System. You, get a, you get a gold, gold star after like twenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm very ignorant to religion. <laughs> oh, no, that's a good. One. I've never heard that one. I'm, All right, so you guys gotta pray five times a day. What happens when you don't pray? I mean, in, in, I mean, in, you go in, to hell, you know. No, but you, in, you're sinning. You're you're a bad person. All these things, but you know, I also. I mean, how strict is that? Like, how strict is that? Five. I mean, I mean, depending. It all depends on the Muslim you run into. Like, you're looking at. Like I just said, I should be praying right now according to the time, but I'm not. I mean, like I said, I'm also not a, observant. But if but you were to call my dad right now, he probably wouldn't pick up the phone because he'd be praying, and he takes that shit very serious. He he he's up at four a.m. Every day to make the farja, you know that's part of the reasons. Probably What's why the I'm not. As, What's that's the, the first prayer of the day. Okay, <laughs> and you got to get up before the sun comes up to do that one, and it's part of the reason what makes it hard on me to be observant because you miss that one, then you can't do any other the one. So you're not. A, so you miss <laughs> <laughs> See, that's crazy, like, right? You miss the first one, you can't do any other ones. They don't even count. So it's like, damn. So what happens that day? Like is that like? What do you mean? I go about my day. I just forget. It. Yeah, but like in the in the in the Bible though, like what does it say happens if you miss a day? Like, is there makeup? Can you do makeup work to like fix yeah, the day? Yeah, that yeah, summer so, school. You know what I mean? Well, see, that's the that's the thing about Islam. 
you know, Allah is merciful. I, I would like to believe, you know. Is that what it he's, says? He's really merciful. Yeah, it says he's merciful. It also says he's vengeful. So, you know, take your poison. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess he could be, there's duality to him. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like, you know, it's more about your intentions in Islam. Uh-huh. And about how you go about, because there's five articles of faith. You know, there's a, Meaning. the declaration saying, one, I am Muslim. Two, making salat. Three is zakat. What's, wait, come on. Salat yeah. is prayer. Okay. Three is zakat. Which is? Giving to charity. Okay. Uh, four is fasting in the month of Ramadan. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that one. Uh-huh. Everybody has that one Muslim homie. <laughs> During that one day in the summer, they're like, no, nah, I can't. And then uh, far, uh, I mean, not, not far, Hajj which is the pilgrimage to Mecca to rotate around the Kaaba. And the reason why I want to send my dad so he can be the perfect Muslim and have all those because he's done all the rest faithfully for years. That's insane. So, like, you know, I don't really do this a lot one, but the four, other four, um, you know, I'm pretty good on Even though fasting, I could be better, but, you know. What do you have to do in, in Ramadan? Like, how little? Can Fast, you, sun up to sundown. So you can't eat while the sun's out? Or drink. Or smoke. Or chew gum, or have sex. Is it against your religion or to curse. smoke weed? Oh no, it's actually in the Quran that says you can smoke weed and do heroin. But is that's, there, is there a, is, it says opium. But I mean, is there a limit? Huh? Is there a limit to everything? How much? And everything is supposed to be taken in moderation. Even your food, even your sex. Are you not allowed to have sex before marriage? There's ways around that in Islam. How? Like so, let's say it's a girl I like. And like she like me, we really vibing. I just be like, "Yo, let's be married for a week." And if she says agree, then I have her say, "You are my, you know, companion under God for one week." And for that one week, we can do whatever we want. So you gotta just don't have to be like, <laughs> he's going crazy, like hey, Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he's saying that's not. Are you Muslim also? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. What about you, Giraffe? What's something that uh, people don't know about you? It's, it better be good, better than the Muslim <laughs> one, because that Shit. one was real good. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I used to weigh like 380 pounds. No way. Yeah. You were twice the size? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm like 210 right now. I lost like a whole person. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was... I, 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 p- I could have been competing with Abyss. Shout out. Shout out Abyss. Shout out, big shout out Abyss. He just dropped a song. Y'all go check that out. That shit's hard, man. Yeah, yeah. I fuck with it heavy. Yeah. I was trying to get Elevator fuck with it, but they weren't really fucking with it, which bummed me out. But. Sleeping. Something oh, shit. Yo, you could, uh, you could press... What What does it say on the on the camera? What does it say? Storage is full. Storage is full? Yeah. All right, we're going to play a song real quick, and we'll be right back. All right. About what do you guys want to play? Story. What do you guys want to play? You can play something. Oh, you should play that jaw track. Oh yeah, on my SoundCloud, first one on there. That was fucking dope. Thank you. Jaw was just in town too. Yeah, that's the homie, man. Um, all right, back to this fucking yeah. Shout out Jaw, but back to this fucking. You were three hundred eighty pounds. <laughs> okay, so how did you lose the weight? Uh, honestly, is like two thousand twelve, and uh, it was the first time I smoked DMT, and for like the first week after I had this experience, I'm like. I should go to the gym. And then I was like, man, nah, fuck that. It's the gym. And then I was like, I just did some drugs. I'm just tripping. And then I was like, yeah, but what have I ever done that's ever been like, hey, go to the gym and take care of yourself and shit. You know, hey, don't eat wait, so, Jack in the Box so what twice was, a day. Wait, wait, wait. Like, so what was the DMT experience? Man. That made you think that, yo, I should go to the gym. All right. So I, it was it was 5-MEO, which is like... <laughs> it, was, it was 5-MEO Which is the shit Off the back of a frog um, And so Yeah I know yeah, it's that's wild crazy. That's crazy I, w- I wanted to how be told did you, How did you even get that? I seen that shit on um, Yo when you live the, in the desert For a while You just meet weird people That have things Isn't like that Isn't there like Only one There's place in the world where, there in the desert. But isn't there only one place In the world Where you can get that shit? I, I guess, man, but dude, like, had you, it, have like, you ever seen the, the, the Vice special, the guy who like... Yeah, you have to yeah, go yeah, out yeah, somewhere yeah, in the yeah, Amazon or yeah, some yeah. shit. Yeah. I don't know. Dude just had the 5-MEO because um, it's totally different than uh, the NN DMT that I've done. Yeah. So like the 5-MEO, I, I was like, it was, it was dark out and I look up 
as I, as I exhale, and I literally watched the earth just fell right out of rotation. We were just falling straight the fuck down. And like, uh, <laughs> and then like, I ble- like there's nothing around. It's just pitch black and we're falling. There's no stars, it's all gone. And like, I, open, I blink and I open my eyes again and I look down and it's literally my, my homie's dog's right there. And I'm, you know, you're like seeing kind of this grid and it's just, I'm seeing this dog all at the same time. So it's fur, skin, bones, muscle, blood, everything that makes this dog. And I was like, dude, this dog has no idea about any of these stars that I just watched disappear. It doesn't even think about this shit. It's just dumb and it'll eat anything <laughs> that it wants as long as it's in its face. And I was like, fuck, I'm that's almost me. no better than this dog right now. And I was like, all right, that's it. I, I need to go to the gym and shit. And so, like, boom, thought about that shit for a week. So you went to the gym? Went to the gym for, like, <laughs> two years or something like that. And then went on tour with Alex got a little fat again and then got back down to like 210. It's, it's hard to be skinny on the road, bro. Like when you're eating canes all the time. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's insane that that, tr- that trip like made you... Dude, every time I've done it, like, I get there and... Changed your life completely. D- bro, they just tell you, hey, welcome, See, welcome home. Them, you're all right. It's the reason why I don't do a DMT. He's what, like, what substance? They're going to be like, I'm like, who's Bro, they? what substance <laughs> have you ever done where someone's like, hey, it's okay, you're cool. I've don't never trip. done a substance where someone said anything Jeez. afterwards. Like, <laughs> 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 they like open the door like, welcome. He's yeah, like, hey, nah. you're home again, <laughs> man. They're going to walk through that door. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so fucking... What can people expect from you from in the future? Uh, you guys got any shout outs and uh, what uh, work? Okay, first, I'm my bad. I'm like loading questions on you guys. First, where can they find you guys at? Everywhere music is sold. But social media, I assume, is what you meant. At Long Live Asad Ill. Okay. It's Long Live Asad Ill. A S A D I L L. Okay. Everywhere. And, and mine is uh, Burning Giraffe. It's B U R N I N G I R A P H. Okay. What can people expect from you guys within the next, before the year's out? Man, uh, well, I just mixed and mastered Satire's album, and that shit is in the top 20 on iTunes right now. No for, fucking way. For new releases, so no yeah. No way. Go check that out. Shout out Satire, LSD. That's the fam. Um, he's got his mixtape coming out, I know. Yeah, it'll be out before the year. And then uh, shout out Osby Chill. Uh, Witchcraft Value 1 will be out before the year ends, too. Okay, and then, yeah, you guys got any shout-outs? Anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Ooh, shout-out my 235 production team. They just did Mike Bogan's album, too. Go get that shit, Joe Fontana. Shout-out S.O.T. Huncho. Follow him, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. Uh... Damn, I don't know. Shout out anybody supporting me, fucking hooking me up with gas money to get places and shit. Yeah. God damn. And to everybody out there, I do appreciate DMs telling me that I saved your life. Yeah, Thank go, you. go stream my shit. I want to You're eat welcome. dinner. All right, uh, what's the last song you guys want to play? Man, you pick it. Flip De Niro, leave me alone. <laughs> we can go out on that one. It's hard. <laughs>